Designers like to bash people who use template as if using them means that you are not a pro designer. But what if I told you that you can take a very boring template and make it look amazing to the point where it can actually win awards? Well, actually, it's not that difficult. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this in four simple steps. So let's go. Okay, so for this example, I'm going to design a website for a company that makes this AC remote because as you know, everybody needs a good AC remote. If it's bad, it's going to be too cold or too warm. You don't want that to happen. So let's make a cool website for an AC remote. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm heading into Reloom. Reloom is a UI component a library that has thousands of different layouts and components. These are, for example, for hero section. And you can see there is many, many different layout options here. Let's go with the most boring one that I can find, which is probably this one header 30. It's basically just like a centered layout image in the background and a heading centered. Very, very boring. So I'm going to head into Figma, import this layout into Figma. And now we're getting started with the first step. Now, the first step is perhaps even the most important step. And the first step is typography. So we're going to break this step into actually three parts. Number one, picking up the right font. Number two, what do we actually write with this font? And number three, the hierarchies, meaning the sizes and the space of the font. So let's get started. I think the most common mistake of beginner designers is they're straight away heading for free Google fonts, which are just look bad, right? And if you want to have your design look unique and look amazing, you want to pick premium fonts that are amazing. So here are two examples of where I would head to Pengram Pengram, amazing type foundry. You can just scroll here and you can see that the type is so good that almost immediately, whatever you write with it, it's just going to look amazing. And the great thing here is that you can download the fonts to try them out for free. Here's another foundry that I like. Uh, Margot Levesque. And, and so you can see the fonts just look so good. So the first step, if you pick the right font, right? If you just pick the right font, that's going to make everything else so much easy. So in Figma, the first step that I'm going to do is try out some different fonts. So here I just wrote the remote and I'm just going to try to see how it looks with a few different fonts that I like. So this already looks good. And you can see even without an image in the background, if you put, pick a good font and you set good spacing and sizing for the font, already this layout looks pretty good. So now I can try out a few different fonts. As you can see, if the fonts are really good, this already looks good. We already, we didn't do much and already this looks like a premium design. So this is the first step. Once I'm trying out a few different fonts and I like the fonts, I can explore the other things like what are we writing? So here I wrote the remote, but now I'm trying different hierarchies. For example, what happens if the de is not bold? Maybe it's light and it's a little bit smaller. You can definitely see that it looks different, right? Maybe it looks better. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. But the point is I'm trying to experiment with a lot of different things here. Let's try instead of the remote to write, make it 22 or maybe cooler by design. And as you can see, as I'm playing around with these things, maybe cooler by design, bigger, but it's also lighter. Each one of this conveys a different feel. And so we can go ahead and play around with this and I can explore this forever. This looks completely different. It's the same font, it's the same layout, but I just made it more minimalistic and it gives it a completely different vibe. This one, uppercase, bold, so big that it takes up the whole space of the design immediately looks better. I mean, looks bigger, bolder. So it conveys a different feeling and it looks unique. Nobody cares anymore that this is just a template of a very simple layout. So I'm playing around here in Figma. I'm duplicating, duplicating, playing around, testing out different hierarchies, testing out different, look at this. This looks like a, you know, a, a a slide from a show on Netflix or something like this, because the font is really good. The hierarchies are good. It just looks great. So I'm exploring a lot of different options here. I like this. This also looks very, very stylish. Reminds me of something in, in fashion or, or something like this. So this is the first step. And as you can see, if you pick the right fonts and you nail the hierarchy and uh, what you're writing with the font, already you're in a good starting point. And some people, some great designers even just stop here. They create minimalistic websites. It's just good typography. They don't even need images, right? But imagine 
if we do have amazing images. So this is a second step. Let's create amazing images for this design. So the first step that I'm going to do when it comes to images is I want to get some inspiration of different direction I can go to. Now, just a few years ago, if you didn't have an, a, you know, a huge budget for the client, you would be limited to stock photography, which would really is kind of sucks, right? And it doesn't, it's not very creative. It wouldn't look amazing. But these days with AI tools, you basically have an opportunity to create the wildest images you can even imagine. So let's try to be creative. So the first step is to gather up some inspiration. Now, a lot of people start at collecting inspiration at looking at other websites, but I want to encourage you to look outside of web design. So here's a website that I really like recently. It's called Cosmos. It's basically kind of like Pinterest, but it's really, really well curated. And there's amazing things here. So I can just scroll around here, but I can also go to Again, I had the sense to try to do something maybe in the worlds of fashion. So I can go here into fashion and start looking at different images from fashion. And if I see something that I like, I can right click this and copy the image into my kind of like inspiration board inside of Figma. So I would go around and start collecting images of references that I like. And I can play around with fashion. Maybe I can play around with um, lifestyle products, maybe place the remote here like it was a lifestyle product. I actually really like this image. So these are, I'm just going to collect things that I like. One more idea that I had when thinking about this remote and how to make it premium is maybe treat it like a perfume, right? So let's look at images of perfumes and how it's being portrayed maybe in ads. And maybe that can, just because the shape of this can look like a perfume bottle, and maybe that can give me ideas of visuals that I can create. So this step is super, super fun and very, very creative. Let me head back into my Figma and show you the images that I've collected. So here are some images. Some of them are from fashion. Some of them are from just random abstract things that I like. Here's this image that I like. Some of them are from product design. As I said here, I really like the lighting. I also like this image, which is, I think we can place the remote here and this can be pretty interesting. I also like this composition. It reminds me of a painting by Dali, you know, a little bit abstract, a little bit surreal, what we've got going on here. So I'm just collecting um, all of these images, the way that she's drinking the perfume or holding the perfume. So basically collecting inspiration. And once I have that, I can go on to the next step, which is basically the same step in the images. It's now about time to start creating the imagery. So the first thing that I do here is I take a photo of my ugly remote, and then I start using my favorite AI tool to generate images. So the first style that I want to create images is this black and white raw fashion photography. And let me show you some of the images that I've created. So this image I really like, I actually think it looks a little bit like Britney Spears holding the remote. And then we've got this image We've got this image. So this image, I really like, there's a lot of emotion here. I think she's crying because the remote is so good. So as you can see, these are some really, really cool images, amazing images. Now I want to be fair with you. These are not the first images that are coming from, you know, the AI output. Here's my free pick account, which is what I'm using to generate these images. And as you can see, the first images that I've created are not the best. And you can see here the prompt that I've been using, black and white fashion photography, close up of a model biting the remote. And I've uploaded the reference image of the remote, high emotion, high contrast, flash photography, black background. So the initial images weren't amazing, but then one thing that you also want to play around with when it comes to these AI models is which model you're actually using to generate these images. The first one, you know, I had here on auto, then I tried Seed Dream for a little bit. And then at some point I tried the Nano Banana from Google, which actually gave me the best images. So this is an experimental phase where you basically try to create a, uh, a lot of images until you find something that you love. So let's see what other things I've got going on here. So this was just trying to explore this idea of black and white here. I tried to explore this 
composition where I thought maybe I can use some clouds a little bit because, you know, we're changing the temperature. So maybe play around with the clouds. Can't say that I love this, but well, this is what it is. And then I try to use this composition of, you know, remotes dropping from like lines. Mm, I don't know if this is great. I've got this image, which I thought is kind of like a cool refraction, but I wasn't able to create something amazing from this. So I marked this as a failure. Then we've got this image, which I really liked. And then I did this and I actually like the little droplets of water here because again, temperature, rain, cold, hot. I thought that was pretty cool. I said, hey, let's add some black, um, <laughs> blue light from the background. And I was like, how about we make a little cloud in the background again, temperature. And I actually think that this image is pretty cool. So I love where this came out from. I, I think we can actually do something with this. Then I had this image in the desert. So initially I just started to, by positioning the remote in a desert, maybe with a little cloud on top to again, show that we can manage the temperature there. Um, these images were boring, but then I was starting to add the little scarf that we've got here going on. So it adds kind of like a, also a, a silky scarf makes it look premium, but also like a little bit windy. So I think this became interesting, but then I was like, what I really like about this is there's a mirror here and the mirror makes it look, yeah, kind of like surreal. And so I've added two mirrors on the sides and this actually, I love this composition. There's something very cool in this composition and I think this can actually work. So this one I like. What else do we have here? We've got this close up product shot with orange lighting. And that also came out pretty decent. Perhaps we'll be able to use something like this. And then I had this silhouette of a very dark woman with the perfume. And the first iterations were actually kind of like long shots of the woman, which can work, but I was like, let's do the close up. And then I got these images and oh my God, I'm in love with this image. There is like so much emotion in this image, which I think this can really, really work. I think the composition here might not be perfect because our text is centered and I'm not sure maybe it's gonna hide the remote, but maybe we can fix up the composition and then this image can really, really work. So this was my image exploration. And of course you can spend however endless amount of time creating endless images and iterations, um, as long as you're having fun and you've got time to work on the project, right? And so the next step is to pick the images that I like and place them together with the type composition that we like. So let's explore this. And immediately you see that, okay, it just looks good. It looks like a magazine spread. It looks like a great website as it is. Now for this one, I wanted to break out the layout a little bit so that the remote is not in the center and hidden by the text. So I actually duplicated the image and placed two remotes here, but I think this actually works. Um, I think this layout is also pretty interesting. This one I really like. I feel like this ended up coming like some kind of a Wes Anderson composition here where everything is very centered and you know symmetrical. I love how this composition came out. And this one, very bold, kind of like in your face. I also think this is pretty cool. And this one, I've moved the women, the woman to the centered just so that we can place the text on like a black area and we can still see the remote. And I really like this. This is, to me, this is so premium. The text is not too big. So it, it feels like there's a lot of space around this. So I really like this composition. So already we've passed step one typography and step two, the images. And already we've got a bunch of cool designs. Let's take this even further. So the third step is to see whether we can add a little bit of details on top of the template. It's cool that we've started with the template. It's a great starting point, but what if we add a little bit of touches on top of it? So let's add some details and see if that adds a little bit of uniqueness to this. So the first thing, here is, of course, we need to add the navigation, which is a logo and some links here at the top. It also gives a little bit of details here. I also took the text and basically kind of like splitted it and put a line between them. It actually makes this 
balance out nicer and it looks more unique with this huge line here. And then a little detail scroll for more. So already we've went beyond and we can't even see the template anymore. Now this looks like a very, very unique design, well balanced. And yeah, I think this is actually a pretty cool result. Now here, I tried something else, which I added a little bit of details here at the bottom. So like three columns and also the fact that we've got like a centered composition, but the images are bro broken and we've got the details at the bottom also adds something to this that doesn't look boring anymore. Now in this one, I tried something else, which is putting the a text that is rotated 90 degree. Now it's not very readable, but it is a little bit of a nice visual detail that allows you to, you know, hey, I can turn my head and see that it says here, hit your perfect 22 degrees, keep it cool. It's like a nice little design detail that again, in this composition, which is kind of like symmetrical, it's very nice. It adds to this composition and breaks the normal boring template feel for this. Now for this one here, I tried to align the text maybe to the top of the line and then to the bottom of this line. So again, from a composition that used to be centered, now we added a little bit of details that kind of break this composition. Now it looks like something completely different. I've also added this grid of lines here at the bottom. So now this composition looks completely far away from where we started with it. And for this one, I didn't add a lot, but you know, with this font and this whole elegance here, I thought maybe we can make the buttons round and then add this little peel, kind of like a mouse scroll for more. And I think this is a nice little detail here. And as you can see, all of the designs that we have so far are already kind of unique. But if we want to take things to the really the next level, we can continue to the fourth step, which is adding animation to all of this. So I've took this into Webflow and let's see what ended up happening. So now we've got a nice intro animation, super, super smooth. And this was so easy to do, right? Because this is was based on a Reloom component. I have access to all of my Reloom components right from here. So I can just basically see them and then copy them into my Webflow project. So I've brought them in, just replaced the font, the text and, um, and the background image. And then I use the new GSAP animation, as you can see here, to create this timeline, which basically took me a few minutes just to animate all of the elements that are on the screen. And you know, nobody cares that this started out as a template. This feels now so premium. Clients would love this and would probably pay thousands of dollars for a design that feels unique and that end up looking premium and looking pretty much like an award-winning website. So I hope you like this. I hope it opened your mind to the creativity and possibilities of starting out with a template, but going beyond it. Of course, if you want to learn how to do this, make sure to check our other videos and our full courses below, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.